Lopez, just ready to start, running a bit late as usual. Um, and we've got Jamie Wilkinson from Google. Hi. Now I've totally lost my speaker's notes. There we go. Trust me, I'm a professional. All right, um, ergonomics is, you know, making sure that we don't get our RSI at our desks. But really, it's the understanding of interactions between humans and systems, right? So it's the science of figuring out how we can optimize our well-being and performance as part of a, a system overall. Um, automation is always justified as having presumed benefits for improving performance, right? Um, but the existence of this talk suggests that that's not actually the case. Uh, in computers, right, software is automation, designed to replace tedious work, shell scripts, Perl scripts, um, Puppet. But it's not just that, right? It's also everything that we ever build with computers at all is automation in some way. Um, computers are just tools, ultimately, that help us do stuff. Um, when you have a puppet driving a Kubernetes, driving a Docker, driving Jenkins, driving a puppet, driving a Docker driving application, then we have a lot of automation. And so ultimately, that's what I'm here to talk about. Um, I'm an SRE at Google. I work in storage infrastructure. I find monitoring and automation really fascinating. And as I've gotten older, I realize that everything to do with automation is really part of safety science. And that means the aviation industry has beat us to it by about 50 years. Um, right, so if you learn nothing from this talk, just write down these papers and then go read them. And then you don't have to listen to anything I say for the next however long I have. Uh, lots of research is done in the 80s and 90s as a result of all the automation that the, was built in the medical and aviation industries over, uh, I think, the last 70 years, let's say. I'll pick a random number. Since the 50s, we've been building automation systems in aircraft. Um, As a sysadmin, I'm sure you can relate to a lot of the things that they found that was wrong with automation as it was built, such as the creator of the automation oversimplified the task from the perspective of the user. They assumed that the operators would remember relevant knowledge. They f the automation failed to handle meaningful circumstances and scenarios in all cases. The machines never, ever err. They were designed in terms of what it takes to get the technology to work rather than what it takes for a human to operate it. They would sacrifice the user-oriented aspects first when any trade-offs arise, and they would always focus on making sure they could build the automation rather than trying to integrate it with anyone who was going to, well, the system that it was going to integrate into. Uh, so take a photo. I'm about to move on. I'll come back to it later if you like. So here are the benefits of automation. These are truths, right? Everything up here is is what we expect automation to do when it all goes right so that the machines do the work and we have time to think. And we have reduced our uh, overall workload, right? Nobody's working 80-hour weeks anymore. No one's working 40-hour weeks anymore. Um, the original designs for automation were based on this myth called substitution. It's now a myth. It was assumed to be correct at the time. Um, this outdated term, Mabba Mabba, which meant a uh, with basically assignment of work between a man or a machine, sorry, a human or a machine. The idea was that both of us have strengths and weaknesses, and we'd like to capitalize on those strengths and minimize our weaknesses. Uh, it turned out it's a myth because the moment you start introducing the assignment of work to either a man or a machine, or sorry, a human or a machine, you modify the process, and now the interactions between the two of us change, which alters the strengths and weaknesses of everyone in the system. Uh, so we've created a new dynamic, right? Um, there's an old belief that every time we introduce new technology, we change the tools, but the processes never change. Uh, in reality, we are still faced with the same end requirements, but what we really do is we change the practice with which we achieve those goals. So a builder upgrades from a hammer to a nail gun as the technology allows them to punch spikes of into metal spikes into wood faster. But then as a uh, prefabricated frame shows up on the building site, the builder doesn't try and, uh, sorry, the, the whole process of building a house 
it, like the end goal is still building a house, but the process in which we do, we're no longer trying to hammer bits of nail in together because the frame arrives. This is kind of a weak analogy, so I, I apologize. Uh, but introducing automation now shifts the role of the human from that of being uh, manually performing a task to supervising the, uh, the action of a task and managing automated resources. Um, so ultimately, the papers I listed before list these surprises as the result of this research over 70 so years. Um, automation, unexpectedly, transforms the practice and work of role of people. Um, I'm sure you can think of examples where all of these have occurred to you as system administrators or software engineers in, in your own world, right? This is what I'm trying to draw this. Uh, everything that the uh, aviation industry has discovered applies equally well to computing, right? And ultimately, we haven't improved our own lives by creating automation. We've just shifted the problem around. So we didn't, check, we didn't reduce our workload. We've shifted it. And we've, one of the unexpected results is that we've now unevenly shifted it. So automation systems tend to be useful in low load environments, but as soon as things start to go a little bit catastrophic, they are either useless or a hindrance. Pilots found that they would have to trans uh, during landing, where it's quite a high stress situation relative to the normal flight, that was air traffic control wants to know what's going on in the plane. And the flight computer would be saying what's going on in the plane. And the pilot's role would then be tell air traffic control what the flight computer says and then put into the flight computer what air traffic control says. And so they ended up performing more work than they would be if they were in control of the plane themselves. The pilot flying and the pilot not flying found that the pilot flying was doing much less work because the pilot not flying was maintaining all of the automation because the pilot flying was making sure the plane stayed in the air. Automation doesn't communicate very well with us. We have modal errors when automation decides that it's in a particular mode of operation that requires tasks to be performed in it in a particular way and other modes interact in different ways. Um, a lot of aircraft, air crash, a lot of air crashes have occurred because of modal errors in the automation. I mean, you can think of examples in our own world where everyone who's ever complained about using Git on the command line understands that every different command has a different set of command line flags. Um, automation tends to compensate for abnormal processes in the system it's managing up to a point. And then once its capacity is exhausted, it tends to give up. And then the human has to dive in and figure out what has gone wrong because there's no context. And usually it's an emergency situation. Uh, for this class of cases, new feedback and communication models between humans and machines is needed because the automation needs to say, I am having trouble with this, but I'm still okay. And then I have to take some extreme action or we're about to uh, exceed what I'm capable of dealing and I need to let the human know. So uh, involving people earlier on in that process is possibly one way to compensate for this. Uh, but ultimately, people trust computers because they mostly work. And so people are bad at risk management, and therefore, if the computer is doing the right thing 99% of the time, then we assume that it's going to be right 100% of the time. If we assume it's always going to make the right decisions, then we fail to detect and intervene with the system failures and any undesirable behavior that occurs. Um, machines can be rational, because we program them to be so, but they can't be ever responsible for their decisions. Ultimately, it's the person who programmed them that takes that responsibility, although that is an externalized responsibility. Um, another observation is that models in the mind of how systems work is often mismatched with how the systems really work. Pilots who train in uh, simulators found that they still had transition problems moving into uh, real aircraft because glass cockpits themselves are systems that uh, can't ever be like a full model of reality, right? It's a simulator. Training is difficult because rote memorization means you can't activate that knowledge in context. You have to actually role play those events to... Um, so you can be interviewed on uh, during a test, right? You, you learn everything and you, the test question asks you the question in the right way and you can immediately return the correct answer. People were very good at that. but. If you need to activate that knowledge in the right situation, and you've never been in that situation before, it's incredibly difficult. So even though you know the right answer, 
at the point of stress, this is an incredibly difficult thing to do. Uh, new automation introduced new ways for the system to fail, and now you have to understand that as well as the original system. And we've, uh, the, the, the new automation can also in, introduce uh, new ways to indicate errors, and you have to learn about them as well. Uh, and another interesting behavior is that many pilots discover that this, the plane's flight computers will still surprise them three years after they've been declared an expert as a, a pilot of a particular type of plane. Uh, many interviewed pilots would say that, you know, regularly they'll go, oh, that's a, a, a case we've never experienced before. Uh, so how do we fix this? The idea is not to treat automation as its own independent autonomous unit, um, where we try and assign work based on strengths and weaknesses of the actors in the system. We treat humans, sorry, human-centered automation is oriented towards the needs of the practitioners, the operators of the environment. And the objective is not to replace, but to um, support humans in any system. Uh, so always humans are going to be involved in complex, um, dynamic, bigger and bigger systems. So the key to the successful future of these systems is in how the systems support cooperation with humans and not in replacing them entirely. Um, but not just in the foreseen situations, but also in the unexpected situations. So really, how, does, how do teams of humans work together? Uh, the idea, sorry, let me step back. The automation has to become a part of your team. It has to be a team player. Team players typically are observable to their other teammates, and they are directable. Now, we see this often in human teams, where you can delegate tasks to somebody else. You can ask them to do something. It's very easy for you to say, I would like this thing done, and it's very easy for that person to understand what it is you want to get done. And you can trust that they'll get it done without having to micromanage them. You can also observe them doing it, and you understand the outputs through communication. So if we can start to move to that kind of model with automation, then we start to integrate them as a useful team player and not just a machine that I press buttons at and cross my fingers that it's going to do the right thing. Um, ultimately, the, thing, the reason why I care about this stuff is because I think everything about automation and computer systems operations and on-call response is a lot like safety science, and there's a lot of research into safety science. If we can make our automation easier to use and easier to understand, then we're going to minimize the number of outages we, occur, uh, we, we cause, and we're going to improve the time to recovery for those outages that we couldn't prevent. So human-computer interaction is not just UI fluff. It's actually really important for our jobs, our well-being, and I guess the future of everything. So yeah, that's my screed. Thank you very much. Any questions?